What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P, and this video is going to be crucial for more than half of you out there. Why you ask? Well here on YouTube back in November, I ran a poll asking how many of you plug your headphones and your microphone into your front I.O. And 50% said you do. Now before we get into the meat and potatoes of this video, which is five gaming amp and DAX that will just instantly improve your audio, let's talk about why that front I.O. is bad for your headphone and microphone jack. And just real simple, it could cause interference, a higher noise floor, that dull static sound that's constantly in the background. That's because when you plug it into the front I.O., the cable connecting it to your motherboard is routed through your PC. And as a result, it could be picking up high frequency radio interference caused by other components in your build, worsening the quality, and even the quality of the cables used for that front I.O. could be a contributing factor. So how do you avoid it? By avoiding that altogether. And I should also note a lot of this interference is going to be a lot more noticeable if your headset plugs with the mic input into your front I.O. You can get much, much better mic quality plugging into the back of your motherboard or the subject of today's videos, an amp and DAC. And it's funny because in a lot of my headset reviews, people will claim that I'm faking the mic test because if they buy it, they'll say that my mic sounds a lot clearer versus when they buy it. And I'd be willing to bet more than anything, they're the ones plugging directly into the front I.O. All right. Amps and DACs. Today we've got five different ones to go over. The ones that I've used for a while. Like I said, I started this video back in November. We have the Sennheiser GSX-1000 SteelSeries Game DAC, the Shit Full of 3 Astro Mixamp Pro TR, and the Sound Blaster X G6. Now with the majority of my audience being gamers out there, these are targeted and marketed as gaming amp and DACs, which is why I picked them. Yes, there are thousands of other amp and DACs out there that aren't gaming necessarily, but gaming amp and DACs get you some extra features like EQs, a uh, side tone for monitoring your mic, and also, maybe more importantly, is more juice. Not only is it going to make your audio sound better, but amp and DACs have more power to them to fully drive those headphones to their utmost potential. Things like that are why I feel like gamers would find this stuff most appealing. And each of these five are very different in their own way. They all have their own feature sets, different stuff like that. Uh, but they're also some of the top five out there that are highly rated. So when I was you know, doing a quick search, these were very, very highly sought after. And I figured you know, I'd pick them up and do a little roundup for you guys, tell you about each of them and why you would want to benefit from this. Okay, so for each of them, I'm not going to go over every single detail because we'd be here for three hours, but more so a general feature roundup. And in no particular order, we're just going to start off with the Sennheiser GSX-1000 because technically it is the more advanced. It has the most features to it. And price-wise, I saw it on Amazon fluctuating between $150 and $200. So definitely the more pricey option here. But again, you get what you pay for, plus some. So in terms of physical features, I like how it's nice and compact, the sort of square design here. Not going to take up too much space on your desktop. And the entire face of it is an OLED screen and a volume dial. The ring is nice and smooth. You can make your adjustments there right on the fly. And in terms of inputs and outputs, it's all on the backside. So when it's on your desktop, you won't have any cables, you know, running across your actual desk. It all gets routed out the back. I think overall the GSX-1000 does float that line of looking like a gaming amp and DAC, but also kind of keeping it, you know, on the more minimal side because in reality, there's not too many buttons. Now, since the screen itself is touchscreen, that's where you can go in and control everything. You can do things like change between different EQs, like the music mode, story mode, or an esports gaming mode. You have reverb control for, you know, open world games or more controlled confined spaces, different side tone level adjustments, different surround sound positioning, even a button to direct the audio from your headphones to your speakers if you have them plugged into this as well. So a lot of adjustment here. It will take some time to really dial it in and see what fits your preferred sound signature and sound settings the best. But when you do find those sound settings that you like, you'll see on each corner of the top of the amp and DAC are these little red lines. Those are actual touch sensitive buttons, which you can save to be four different presets or profiles. So you can have four different profiles all saved right to those little touch sensitive buttons. Additionally, on the right side, there is a button for adjusting your microphone, which is always nice to have that additional volume control. Now for each one, I'll kind of explain its sound signature, but I want you to keep in mind that everyone's going to sound different to every person. So for the control, I'm going to be using my drop in Sennheiser PC 3 at X headset. And the sound signature of these is also going to reflect differently on each amp and DAC and also my interpretation of audio since so it's completely subjective. So keep that in mind, your headset, your headphones, whatever you're using may sound a bit different because all the sound signatures and interpretation is going to be different. So right away for me, gaming on the GSX-1000, everything just sound very 
accurate, rich, and I'd say give a slightly warm boost all across the board. Um, now, like I said, there's a bunch of different sound settings and EQs you can go in to toggle and mix up depending on what game you're playing. For me, I really found the story setting on the stereo audio sound best because it combines the bass from the music setting and the enhanced treble from the gaming setting. So story sounds really, really good. But yes, definitely a warmer, richer tone to this. So for the surround sound setting, like I said, I mainly keep this on stock stereo audio, but Sennheiser does surround sound right. They appropriately open the sound stage. It doesn't worsen the quality at all. So while at the end of the day, it is still emulated. They're definitely one of the leaders in the field. They do it right, it sounds good, but I still think the story mode on stereo sounds best. Getting this fully set up is kind of tricky. I definitely recommend reading the manual that comes with it because even if you are using headphones with this, you want this to be in your sound settings to be set as default as the speaker output. Took me a while to figure that out. I thought I had to return this. Now let's talk the SteelSeries game deck. This little guy, just like the GSX-1000, is the only two here to actually have a screen so you can visually see your settings. You can control your sound settings, your actual chat settings. You can see the sample rate in real time. Also, the left and right channel real time for your audio so you can see that going. That's like a nice little visualizer. For as small as this is, it's got a lot built in. There are some settings inside that you can go through and toggle between. You have things like adjusting the level of side tone, the amount of gain this has, uh, even your mic settings. You can all adjust that in here. And also some settings to uh, kind of like tie into other Steel Series headsets and stuff like illumination, but if you're not using, obviously, uh, one of their Arctis headsets, you won't have to worry about that. Uh, but what's also great about this is just that, again, on the fly adjustment. Go in, change the sound settings in terms of EQs, they have a few built in on here, but you can also make your own custom one to really fine tune that EQ adjustment to your music, movies, gaming, anything. So we'll say stock out of the box. The sound signature for this is very balanced and neutral. It doesn't do anything really to elevate your headphones. However, with the built in EQs and just, you know, adjusting it on the fly, that's where you can go in and kind of change it up. I like Smiley and Bass Boost the best for gaming. Uh, so I like how you do have that on the fly EQ adjustment, but just very neutral out of the box. They do have a smaller button, which toggles their surround sound, because on the back side you do have an optical port if you want to really get the most out of your surround sound. In this case, though, it's not the best. I would definitely recommend sticking to the stereo sound setting. I have a feeling it's because, you know, unless you're not using an Arctis headset, it's not going to sound that great. Their surround sound's probably more tuned to those drivers in their Arctis headset, so I would keep it off stick stereo. So in terms of price, their game DAC is often sold and bundled with some of their wireless headsets, but you can buy it separately, which I did for 130. Next is the Shit Full of Three. Yes, you can laugh at the name all you want, but shit knows their shit. They are great when it comes to audio gear. And for only 99 bucks, this one on here is the more budget friendly option. It's the cheapest one on this list. And man, it packs a punch and keeps it all simple. As you can see, you just have the simple volume dial on the top of it. If your mic and headphone split jack in the front, but man, for it being such a tiny, compact device, this thing sounds really, really good. I'm very impressed with the sound quality. And this is still marketed as a gaming amp and DAC, but unlike some of the other ones that we're talking about today, this does not have those extra features, like side tone. There's no side tone to this. There's no surround sound. There's no different EQs. There's no software. So it does keep it very simple in that regard. So honestly, not 100% sure why it is marketed as a gaming amp and DAC, but hey, it's highly rated. I'm a huge fan of it, so it's it's gonna make the list. So the full of three for sound signature is gonna give you an elevation all across the board. It's definitely gonna boost your audio level, so things are gonna be a lot louder, so you can you know adjust that on the fly, thankfully. But yes, elevated, louder, uh, much more lively and rich. The soundstage widened as well. Uh, they got some magic going on in the full of three, but uh, the number one term I think with this would be lively. Another cool thing you can do is with the output on the backside, there's an additional micro USB slot, and you can use that to plug in like a power bank, for example, and power this without hooking it up to your PC. You can use that with like your phone or something. So for just $100, shit is definitely the shit. You will not regret this at all. Now we have the Astro Mixamp Pro TR. And I actually checked this out two years ago when I checked out their newer A40 headset. This came bundled along with it, but just like SteelSeries, they do sell this separately. And you can pick up the Mixamp Pro by itself for 130. And not only is it an amp and DAC, but it's a pretty versatile mixer as well. Because on the left side, you have that massive volume knob for controlling your, your gain pretty much for your headphones. But then on the right side, you can toggle between your game and your voice chat. 
And that's gonna be helpful not only to you, but also if you're a streamer. Because one of the things with this is on the backside, in addition to all the other ports, you have this little stream jack. This lets you use a 3.5 millimeter jack to plug from this to your PC, and then to directly have a separate stream channel. So if you're streaming in like OBS or something, those audio levels that you have set on the device is directly what the viewers will hear. So that's definitely pretty cool. This one also has a switch to toggle between the PS4 and your PC, so you can use this on console. You also have four built-in EQs with this you can toggle between. I kept it at stock for most of my testing with this. And there is software that you can go in and customize those and save them onto here, but it's not needed. Only if you wanna customize the EQs. Then on the front, you have your combo three pole jack. So note, if your headset uh, splits out into a separate headphone jack and a microphone jack, you're gonna have to get a connector to plug it into here. If that's the case though, most headphones do come with one. So the big thing for me with the Astro Mixamp TR Pro is uh, warmth. Astro is definitely known for having a more warmer sound signature, and that was just immediate right out of the gate. Everything gets a warmer boost to it. Um, so if you have you know a very sparkly, lively pair of headphones or a headset, this will add that warmth to it. A bit of a bass boost as well. This was all on the stock EQ setting. I didn't go into the software and adjust anything or alter anything and save it to here. And again, with the built-in EQs on here, you can toggle between them, but this was just for the stock settings. Now the Mixamp Pro does also have a button to toggle their Dolby surround sound setting. And this, you're gonna, you're gonna wanna use the optical cable to get the most out of that. Uh, but honestly, it just does not sound that good to me. I'm not a fan of it. This could also be a situation, just like I said before, with the Steel Series one, where it's more so tuned and made for their own Astro headphones and stuff. So it could sound better with that, but I just have never really liked it. I would definitely recommend sticking to the stereo sound setting on here. But yes, in terms of just, you know, the physical buttons and dials and stuff, uh, very, very helpful for gamers and streamers. Then lastly, we have the Creative Sound Blaster X G6. And this, very simple to get up and running, again, like the others. No software is required, so it's plug and play. Uh, but if you do want to go in and customize EQs, you do have that option, but it is not required. In terms of physical buttons, there's only four, so it's pretty simple. You have the volume knob right on that front side there, which is in between the headphone jack and the microphone jack. But then on the right side, you have three separate buttons. One is for toggling their scout mode, which is an EQ. You have the SBX, which is their own creative surround sound setting. And then a gain dial from low to high. So if you want to kind of boost it a little bit and get more volume out of these, you'd want to put the gain to high. You also have additional ports in the back for your optical line in and line out. But really, for it being so slim and compact, one thing I like about this with the particular shape and size is the fact that you can just kind of mount this underneath your desk. You can keep it out of the way, but still have it there at an arm's reach and still adjust the volume with the dial. So the G6 sound signature definitely favors lower end frequencies. This gives you a pretty big bass boost, which depending on what game you're playing could be good, it could be you know bad, uh, but the kind of you know, counteract that, they have the scout mode on the side, which definitely gives you then a treble increase for hearing like footsteps and stuff like that. And then the SBX, which is their surround sound, also sounds pretty good. It is one of the better sounding emulated surround sounds um, out there on the market. Uh, but yeah, bass heavy for the G6. This one, a bit too pricey, I think, for what it is. Uh, it comes in at 140. All right, now we're gonna head back to the PC and do a microphone test. So you could hear how each of the amp and DAX do and perform in terms of their microphone quality. And like the sound signature of each, they're each gonna have different mic qualities as well. So you can hear how they each sound. Okay, so now for the mic test portion, this is gonna be the control. I'm gonna use this headset for all the amp and DAX. This is the Drop in Sennheiser PC38X, which is one of my favorite headsets out there. Uh, sounds great, and as you can hear for the microphone, very good as well. It's just very hard to come by uh, when it comes to you know a gaming headset. Now, take note, this is not plugged in to my front I.O., obviously. This is plugged into the back of my motherboards. You can hear how this sounds, just baseline, the mic itself, with none of the, you know, the work behind the scenes um, from the amp and DAC. So, again, just a general mic test, you can hear how this sounds without the amp and DAC. Okay, first up is going to be the Sennheiser GSX-1000. And as you could hear right now versus the stock microphone, this is 
notably not as good. What they're doing is there's a lot of compression going on. It does a pretty good job overall at eliminating a lot of that background noise and stuff, which is why the overall voice quality gets compressed. But strangely enough, they capped the microphone to 16-bit, 16 16,000 hertz in your sound settings. So it's not going to be as good as a stock mic. So it's as great as it is as an amp and DAC for all the EQ features and stuff, the one area um, it's a bit of a miss at is with compressing and suppressing the overall quality of the mic. Next up, we have the Sound Blaster XG6. And unlike the previous GSX-1000 we just demoed, this lets you go up to 32-bit, 48,000 hertz for the microphone quality. So you can hear it's probably um, a lot better than that just sounded. Uh, still a fair bit of compression going on. That's going to be a common theme with these amp and DACs. A lot of compression in an attempt to eliminate any background noise so you're not picking that up during your streaming or your tournaments or whatever that they think you're going to be going to using these things. Uh, but yes, overall, really not too bad though. Next, we have the shit full of three, and this is a naturally louder amplifier in here for the microphone, and I have it in my PC sound settings down to 30% volume, and just checking my settings right now, we're nearly peaking, so it does amplify your voice a bit, and there still is a good amount of compression going on, uh, but from what I've heard and everything so far, it does, I think, one of the better jobs at maintaining that fullness in your voice without really compressing the overall quality, so I think just for what the shit full of three is doing here uh definitely one of the better ones in terms of you know your mic quality not getting too distorted Next, we have these Astro Mixamp Pro TR. And as you can see, we have the combo jack into the front because this does not have a separate headphone jack and a microphone jack input, uh, just the three pole in the front here. And um, overall, really not too, too bad. One thing I can notice, though, is a significant roll off. So as some of my words start to you know taper off and get below a certain decibel, again, with compression, it starts to cut that out more aggressively. Um, now, granted, I'm not using their own Astro headphones where this would probably benefit from, you know, to, in terms of having that same technology and made for this particular amp and DAC, uh, but really it's not too, too bad. And then lastly, we have the SteelSeries Game DAC. Now, this is sold separately as its own unit, but I, I'm using this from a combo that I have that is sold with their headset. So you may have to pick up this little converter cable I have here, which uses a proprietary like headphone cable that they use to this combo jack for the headphone and microphone input. So keep that in mind, not 100% sure you may have to pick this up separately. And this one by far has the most aggressive compression going on. And in the actual sound settings on the amp and DAC itself, I have the mic level set to six, which is where it's probably going to be safest. Because at seven, it was peaking with anything I said. So here, uh, still a bit loud, but it's not peaking and blowing out the audio, but definitely the most aggressive in terms of compression and um, really capping the overall quality, I'd say. There was a quick sort of feature roundup before we end this. Um, again, I didn't go over every single thing about each one because this video would be very, very long. But what's great is they're all plug and play. None of them need software. It's not required. But with the Mixamp Pro TR and the G6, you can download software to customize the EQs. For the sample rate, the G6 definitely has the biggest advantage here, boasting a 32-bit, 384 kilohertz rating, which just demolishes the sample rate of something like the Mixamp Pro TR. Then circling back, like I said before, with the full of three, we don't have surround sound, we don't have side tone, we don't have EQs. So with this, you will miss out on those gaming features. So while the real advantage of using a separate amp and DAC is to get that extra boost out of your audio, that's where the impedance comes in. So depending on your headphones that you're using, you really shouldn't have any issues pushing those drivers. But the Mixamp Pro, again, is pretty limited there. All right, at the end of the day, like I said in the beginning, I picked the top five more common gaming amp and DACs out there that were very highly rated. Now, each one of these obviously has their own separate feature set, different sound signature and stuff like that. But my quick rundown of each is gonna be this. Best bang for the buck, no doubt the full of three for $99. While you don't necessarily have those gaming features like side tone, EQs, and stuff like that that some of the other ones do have, for the price, the sound quality at this is just outstanding. Now, on the other spectrum, if you want to pay significantly more, double, at uh, close to $200 on the GSX-1000 that has all the bells and whistles, all the EQs, tons of customization, surround sound that's actually usable, then that's where this is going to come into play. But again, it's very, very pricey, but I think you're getting a lot more than what you're paying for in the end, considering how flexible this is. 
And then for that middle ground there, um, each of these three now are going to be separate. For the streamer who games and streams constantly, the Mixam Pro is clutch for the two different volume knobs, adjustment on the ply for game chat, your, your audio, the different outputs and stuff for console, the separate stream output for controlling those adjustments on the fly, daisy chaining, all this stuff is crazy for the Mixam Pro, definitely. Then you have the game DAC, which I think is also very good in its own regard. A lot more compact, which I like. On the fly adjustments with EQs and customizing all that stuff. Uh, but you will pick up the separate adapter. I'm pretty sure it doesn't come with this unless you buy it separately. Not 100% sure. Uh, but for the price, also very good. And then lastly, the Blaster X G6, which is a really good portable amp and DAC. Um, as you can see, nice and tiny, compact. You can mount it under your desk like I did and have that flexibility here. Not too complex in terms of the actual physical features and adjustments, but it's just right. It was my first gaming amp and DAC. I believe it was the G5 back in 2015. I got it, so that's why I did include this one as it is. But yes, for those starting out, you know, for the price, also not too bad. And uh, that should be a pretty good wrap up for you guys. So again, do not ever use your front IO for audio. You'll be completely missing out on the overall potential quality of that headset or microphone or whatever you're using in the end. So if you wanna check them out, I'll have all five listed for you in the description down below, as well as a link to one of my favorite headsets out there. Crazy good quality for the price. They drop at Sennheiser PC 38X. It'll all be listed for you in the description down below. And guys, I'll wrap it up for five gaming amp and DACs that will instantly improve your gaming audio. Hope you all enjoyed. If you did, give this video a big thumbs up to show your support. Feel free to follow me on Twitter, at RandomFrankP. And lastly, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Hope you all enjoyed. Have a good day.